Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover regular expressions. I've covered regular expressions in another tutorial, but it was specific to Python. Even though regular expressions are the same, no matter what language you use, I felt that I must do this with PHP. But this should help all of the people that have been sending me emails asking me questions about how to search through or parse through HTML code to find specific information. Regular expressions is the tool that you want to use. And this part of this tutorial is going to be very specific. I'm going to show you how to find just about anything. As you can see, here's a name, here's an address, here's a state, zip code, phone number. I'm going to show you how to find all these things, even passwords, complicated things like that. But to start off, what I'm going to be doing here is searching through this array that I created that is full of a bunch of strings. I'm going to show you later how to search through a string. And I'm going to do the most simplistic of all regular expression searches. I'm going to use the preg grep method. This is the thing that's going to be different. With PHP you're going to use preg grep. With other languages you're going to use other methods. Then you want to surround whatever you are searching for with what is called a delimiter. Don't let that confuse you. I'm going to explain here in a second what that is. Now if I'm searching through this array for my specific name, this is the most simplistic of all regular expressions because I'm defining exactly what I'm looking for. And then then I follow that up with the array I want to search through. And match name is going to hold an array. Match name is actually an array that is going to hold all of those things that are found that match this specific word or name that I'm searching for. So to find all the matches, I'm going to call the for each tool match name as result. I trust you know what that means because I covered that in the previous tutorials. But if you're using another language, that's perfectly fine as well. Just focus in on the regular expression part. Copy this break down here, paste that in, file save it, jump over here, and hit reload. And you see that it located my name inside of this array and printed it to screen. Now, whenever you're looking for certain things inside of an array for this example, what you do is you use certain codes to define what exactly you are looking for. So for example, if you are looking for a number, the code you would use is backslash D. This would represent any number from 0 through 9. Okay? Uppercase D would match anything that is not 0 or 9. You're actually, in reality, not going to use that very often. Backslash W is going to represent any character, A through Z, lowercase and uppercase. It's also going to match numbers, and it's also going to match underscores. Capital W is going to represent anything that is not that. Backslash S is going to represent anything that's a space or a white space, so it could be a tab or something else. Uppercase S is going to match anything that isn't that. And backslash B is going to match what are called word boundaries. So if we had hat and cat, this would be called a word boundary, this space in between these words. Now, the backslash S would also match that, but let's chop the cat off. And this is still a space. This is not a word boundary, however, because there's no characters that precede it. However, it is still a space. Okay, so hopefully that's understandable. And a B, uppercase B, is going to represent anything that is not a word boundary. All right, so let's go in here now with that knowledge that we have gained. And let's search for something a little bit more complicated, like, for example, to find this zip code. How would I do that? Well, I forgot to tell you about delimiters. Delimiters, in this case, I'm using percent signs. You can, that is just something that I define, and it is going to be the beginning and the ending of what I am going to be looking for. You can use many different delimiters. The most common delimiter that people use is actually a forward slash. But you could also use an at sign, or a hash, or a backslash, or a tilde, or a percent sign, which is what I'm using in this situation, or an and, or a single quote, or a double quote. Almost nobody uses single quotes or double quotes because of the fact that regular expressions are normally surrounded by single quotes and double quotes, and that causes all kinds of problems. But you can use pretty much anything you want that I showed you right there. I'm using percent signs. All right, so what I'm looking for, however, is these five digits. And I only want to find situations in which there are five digits, no more, no less. So I'm going to have a backslash D, and I'm going to show you here again. I'm going to use a curly brace and put a number inside of it and a closing curly brace to define that I'm looking for exactly five digits. And if I save that, and then hit reload. You can see that it searched through all of this and found this specific guy right here. Now back to these curly braces. If you want to define a certain number, like for example, I used five. So if you wanted to say five digits, you would do just as I had here. 
So you're going to say, I'm looking for five of whatever precedes what lies between these opening and closing curly braces. And the thing that lies before this is a digit, a number. So this is basically saying I'm looking for five digits. Okay. Now, if you wanted to find instead one to five digits, so you want returned any results that match one to five digits, you would do this specifically. This is the minimum number you will require or you will take, and this is the maximum number that you will take. And if you don't care about the maximum, but you do care about the minimum, let's say you only want returned answers that only contain three digits, but you don't care about the maximum. This would also work. And actually, if I put this up here, it would return the zip code as well. All right, let's go in here and I'll show you how to find something a little bit more weird, like this guy up here, which is a character followed by a star, followed by a word boundary, followed by a digit, followed by a space. All right, so if we want to find that very specific thing, we're going to type in backslash lowercase w, which represents characters. And we're going to denote here that I'm looking for zero or more characters with this star. Doesn't have anything to do with that guy right there. And I'm also going to say I'm looking for a word boundary followed by a digit followed by a space. And then I'm going to say also with the dollar sign that this is going to be the end of the string. So and I'm going to explain what that means. File save, jump over here reload and it found just that very specific random string that I was looking for. Now if you wanted to find that you want to find, for example, I'm typing down here, zero or more characters, you would put down the character code followed by the star sign which denotes zero or more of what precedes it which would be a character. Okay, so that's what that does. And if you wanted to find the end of a string, you would use the dollar sign. That denotes that the string has ended. So if this went P star word boundary number, space, and then had more things, this would not match. If you wanted to also denote that you wanted the P to be the very first character in this string, you would precede it with the caret symbol. So that would make sure that this was the beginning and the end of the string because the caret denotes the beginning of the string and the dollar sign denotes the end of the string. I'm going to give you a gazillion examples, so if you're a little tiny bit confused, don't worry about it. You're totally going to get this. Another thing you guys are always looking for is information that is stored between tags. Okay, fine. So we're going to put the caret symbol in here again and we're specifically going to look for this text right here. That's what we want. So we're going to denote that the string that I'm looking for is going to start off right here. Nothing's going to precede it. And then it is going to be followed by an opening tag brace. And then with the period, I'm defining that it is going to contain any type of character possible except for a new line. Star means one or more of those. And then we got our closing part for the tag. And here with these parentheses, I'm defining that I only want to take out what lies between the tags and I do not want the tags themselves. Okay, so only what lies between here is going to be sent and stored in the match name array. So in here, I'm going to define again that I want returned any character that will occur zero or more times. And then I'm going to end this again with any character zero or more times and a closing brace. And then put the dollar sign in here to say that the string will at that point end. And if I go file save, jump over here, you can see that it found that specific thing and it only outputted random text. It did not output the tags that were stored in this random array. So again, a period represents anything but a new line, just like backslash D represent any number, or backslash W represents any character or number. Star represents zero or more times, whatever precedes it. Dollar sign represents the end of the string. Caret represents the beginning of the string. Okay, so I trust that you now are getting that. So let's give another example that's maybe a little bit more confusing. Let's say I wanted to find anything that matched Jennifer, Jenny, or Jen inside of this array up here. How would I do that? Introduce another new code, and I think you're getting the hang of the fact that the percents are going to be surrounding this. So I'm going to say I'm looking for specifically any string that begins with the letters J, E, and then that end with the letter N, and I'm going to use the pipe symbol to represent OR, end with the letters N, N, I, F, E, R, OR, end with the characters N, N, Y. And then I'm going to put the closing bracket inside of there. And if I go file save, jump over here, 
it's going to output Jennifer, Jenny, or Jen. So it's going to find a hit. You can think of this bracket as going away, but that bracket is going to match Jen, or it's going to match Jennifer, or it's going to match Jenny. That's what these brackets do. You put brackets in there, and they will allow you to return results based off of if different conditions are met. So you could have potential characters, one, or potential character, two, or you get the point over and over and over again. And that's the reason why I was able to go in here and find results for anything that began with the first three letters, Jen. Now I'm going to give you an, another example. Let's say I want to come in here and get doctor, but I do not want to return results for Doug or dog. How would I do that? Again, I'm going to have the caret symbol here to define the beginning of the string. Then I'm looking for the string to begin with the two letters D and O. And then I'm going to use my brackets again. However, I'm going to put a caret symbol inside of them. What this is saying that I do not want results returned if DO is followed by the letter G or UG. But I do want it to return any other results that match up. So whenever you use these brackets with the caret symbol at the very beginning of it, it's just like saying you want everything that meets these standards except for what you define inside of it. And if I file save that, jump over here, you can see that doctor was returned. However, Doug and dog were not returned. Now let's say you wanted to come in here and you wanted to be able to get this address that is right here. Well, you just define exactly what it is. So it starts off the string and it's a digit. And let's just say to be safe, we're looking for anywhere from one to five digits. And then we expect there to be a space. We could put a word boundary in here. Then we expect uppercase letters between A to Z. And we also would accept lowercase letters from A to Z. That's what we're doing right there. Or a period. Put the period inside of there. Close that off. Then we're going to use the plus sign to signify that we must have at least one character or one period. Actually, it should be more, but that's what the plus sign does. It's saying we want, we demand that there's at least one character or period inside of here that precedes this space. That's what we mean by the plus sign. Then we're going to say we expect another space, and we expect that to follow with uppercase letters between A to Z, lowercase letters A to Z, and a period and a bracket. And we expect this to represent street, avenue, any different thing that could possibly come up here. And let's just say by default, we expect between two to seven characters to follow that as well as periods. And then we expect the string to come to an end. And if we file save that, jump over here, you can see that 123 Main Street fits these requirements. See, when you break these down, this representing just the digits, this just representing the space, this representing that which falls after the number to represent the street, and this represents the street itself, meaning two to seven characters in length, it starts to become more understandable. Now we'll go in here and say we are specifically looking for money, meaning this guy right here. So it's gonna start off with a dollar sign, However, if we put a dollar sign in here, that's going to cause some confusion because the interpreter is going to represent at this as the end of the string. So what we need to do is backslash that dollar sign or escape it, which I talked about escaping earlier in a tutorial. So now that's going to look for a dollar sign and not the end of the string. Then we're going to say that we expect a digit to show up and we expect those digits to be between one to three digits in length. And then we may see a comma. We're not certain, so we're going to put a question mark in there. That means, by putting the question mark in there, that there may be a comma expected. However, there may not be a comma expected. So it's going to find it if there's a comma, and it's also going to find it if there isn't a comma. Then we expect digits, and then we expect between one to three additional digits. So the maximum here would be just short of a million would be uh, the results that would be returned. And also in this circumstance, we're going to put single quotes in here so it doesn't pay attention to these backslashes. And we're going to file save that and reload it. And you can see that it was able to go in here and find those numbers. And those specific characters that need to be backslashed, we already know the dollar sign needs it, but the other characters would be the hash code period, caret, star, plus sign, question mark, opening and closing curly braces, opening and closing brackets, backslash, or, and parentheses. So if you use any of these, if you're searching for any of these guys inside of the irregular expression, you need to come in here and backslash it. And of course, whenever you're going to do that, you also want to use single quotes.
In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to go over even more complicated things that you could find with regular expression. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.